Before we get to this video, yet again, I'm going to talk to you about FootTrading.co.uk. I know a lot of you get annoyed by it, but it is what allows me to do this job full time. So thank you to everyone that has subscribed so far this year. The feedback has been phenomenal. Uh, but FootTrading.co.uk is a website that was launched by myself and Dan, aka V273, over on Twitch, um, whereby you guys learn how to trade and get given buying and selling prices for so many cards. We're talking thousands of cards on the market. And just gone live right now is our League SBC investment guide where you guys can make hundreds of thousands of coins from. And icons are now live on the site, buying and selling prices for pretty much every single icon on this game. It's £10 a month for Tier 1, which gets you access to all the buying prices and selling prices. And £15 a month for Tier 2, which gets you access to our amazing live filters tool, which helps you guys make thousands of coins immediately with some of the best sniping filters on this game. You also get access to this chem style calculator, tells you what to sell your cards for and a trade storage area which we have built ourselves for you guys to use so you can keep a track of how much coins you are making every single day on this game. Make sure you check out foottrading.co.uk, but for now, let's get into the video. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing down below. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you never miss a trading video. Check me out on Twitch, click the link down below. Join our Discord server, it is completely and utterly free. Anyone can join it so long as you're not a bad person. Uh, and make sure you check out foottrading.co.uk for all your trading needs. Both Dan and I want to say a massive thank you for you guys and your support this year. That continues to allow us to do this full time. Uh, without you guys, this couldn't happen. Uh, but yes, make sure you check it out. However, today's video is one that a few of you asked about. And that's about trading throughout the week. What you should be doing at the moment uh, to be making as many coins as possible in the long term. So today's video specifically is going to be about investments. Uh, investments that are working, that aren't working, a bit of myth busting in terms of um, what people are saying is going, is going well in the game at the moment and what isn't going well in the game at the moment and a few tips and tricks that you guys can do now which will see you make a lot of coins in the long term. Now what do we mean by investing? Investing is any time that you buy cards off the market and hold them for a period of time to then sell them on later on. Now it's massively important that you realise that with investing, I only use, and most people that can trade, only use spare coins for that. I'm, I think right now in this stage of the game, a lot of the stuff that's better to do is quick flipping. But I am also acutely aware that a lot of people don't have time to sit on this game and hammer out as much trading as possible. So this is more of a video for those of you who don't have that amount of time, or you might have a lot of excess coins. I want to show you some things that are working and will work, and some things that aren't really working. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you right now, is investing ready for league SBCs. I will be right back. All right, so first thing to look at, I just want to show you my transfer pile. If you look at it, icons, special cards, gold cards that have shadows or hunters or whatever on them, and some silvers. I dabble in everything, and this is why it's important you guys start to try and do the same. Icons, obviously, not everyone can do just yet. It's about funds, and I get that. Um, but it's about spreading yourself as much as you can to make coins. But first thing I'm going to do... And it's the most annoying, one of the most annoying things that I've found this year is this stupid way to add players to transfer list. Does my head in. But I'm going to show you the leagues. I'm going to show you Premier League, Quality Silver. And you will see that in the Premier League, I have already started stacking up positions that are strong and needed for League SBCs. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a second. League 1, started doing the same thing. All there. Uh, Syria, start doing the same thing there. More to come. And this is in my opinion, is one of the easiest ways you'll make about 500,000 coins. Now, on the website, under the trading section, if you're a subscriber, we've got every single position of every single team in the top five leagues that requires silver players. So you have to go out and buy one of each player in each position. So if you have two right backs, you buy one of each. Um, but why do we do that? I told you guys before, you know enough now, the league SPCs will come onto the game and they are incredibly popular. They're popular for a number of reasons. First reason they're popular is it gives you packs back. You get 20 packs back from the Premier League, for example. Um, and at the end of that whole thing, you get a pumped up player from that league. And they're usually quite good. Um, and so that's a massive draw for people. But this year, again, we believe they'll be even more powerful than they were in FIFA 19. Because Icon SBCs are coming back. There is a method whereby you can grind League SBCs to do Icons pretty much for free or for very little cost. I remember doing uh, Prime R9 on, on FIFA 19. And I think my total spend that was about 150k to do Prime R9. Um, so that's something to be mindful of that's coming and they'll be even more powerful this year. What happens initially is those SBCs come out and people do them and the silver price steadily rises. But the more that people do them, the more those silver cards come off the market, 
the more they increase exponentially and you get players that end up at 10 to 15,000 coins once they've had their price range update. Last year for Paderborn, very few of their silvers are anything less than 15,000 coins. So we go out and buy one of each of those players and we leave them sat in a club and forget they exist. Literally forget they exist until the league SPCs are dropped. Now the league SPC card design has been leaked, so league SPCs will be coming. Um, but you can go and pick them up for anywhere in the region of 500 to 1,000 coins. The only ones that are more expensive at the moment are the Premier League ones. But how do we get them even cheaper? First place to look is Squad Battle Rewards on Sunday. On Sunday, you literally, you're, you're going to get a huge amount of supply at midnight of people open up packs that will contain silver players. Buy them then. They're a lot cheaper. If you're not sure about where to look for players, go on to Footbin, click on FIFA, FIFA 21, Foot 21 Leagues, and go to each league and look at each team. Now, if you're a subscriber, I've done it for you. But the teams I'd start to look at realistically are any of the newly promoted teams into those leagues. Newly promoted teams into the Bundesliga, the Premier League, the Syria. Top five leagues specifically don't do anything else right now. Um, the Squad Battle Awards is your first place to, to look. Next place to look is if any day we get a daily SBC that, require, that inc includes silver players as part of the reward pack. So a rare election pack, a prime election pack. And that pack is tradable. Buy into them then as well. You haven't got to buy them all at once. But buy into those cards then as well. It's getting it's massively, massively profitable this method. A 1k spend on the player could end up being 10 to 12,000 coins back later on. I estimate that I'll probably end up spending something in the region of 100 to 200,000 coins on these silver cards. I know I will get back about six to 700,000 coins once I come to sell them. Um, next time to look at them, marquee matchups. This week we've got four packs that contain silver players as part of supply. Buy into them then. It's so easy to do and you can just forget they exist. This is a thing that will guarantee to work. There's no debate on it. You are guaranteed profit in the long term. Go and buy them. Leave them sat in your club. Bada bing, bada boom. Bob's your uncle. So that's silver investing. Get it done. Don't forget about that. I'm now going to show you about uh, Team of the Week investing and a bit more detail about that because I've seen a lot of stuff out there and I want to make sure you guys aren't making mistakes. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we're back on Trusty Footbin and this is this week's Team of the Week. Now, a lot of people I see bring out videos and they talk about link investing to um, players. And I've seen suggestions of them and... I think it's a massively important thing to understand here that whenever a promo team is released and you're talking about link investing, you have to look at the cost of the player. Um, I've seen people this week talk about Joe Gomez, for example, and I'm going to get up another one because I want to show you something. I talk about link investing into Joe Gomez with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, Trent Alexander-Arnold isn't that great a right back on this game this year. He's not very pacey. People don't really like him that much. But I want to show you Trent. A lot of people talked about investing into Trent and said that he'd do really well because of the link into Joe Gomez. However, that Joe Gomez card is 389,000 coins on the Xbox market currently. Not many people that have got 389,000 coins to spend on a centre-back are going to link him to a 40,000 coin 80 pace right back. And this is where I think people are going wrong with advice on investing in Team of the Week and on investing in general. The Team of the Week investments, in my opinion, that have done well are cards that are usually deemed to be fodder, which I'll show you after this, and the higher tier cards being linked to higher tier players. Marcus Rashford last week as a Team of the Week and his out-of-pack card did extremely well, partly because he's a five-star skiller, but mainly because he's a very good player on the game, but he linked into Kane. And I saw someone yesterday talking about linking Pogba into... I can't remember who it was, but I think it was something like really... Terrible, it's ter like Martial, something like that. Yeah, Martial might see a rise. But Pogba's over a million coins. People that are linking Pogba up aren't linking into Martial. If they've got a million coins to spend on Pogba, they're not looking at Martial's. They're looking at Mbappe's and stuff like that. And so, it's vitally important that you understand, if you're going to link invest with Team of the Week, it tends to be the higher tier that matters. So if you've got those coins, fantastic, no problem. So I'm going to show you a couple. Valverde got into Team of the Week this week. He obviously strong links into Hazard. Now, Hazard has a few decent links into him. Uh, but Hazard's card currently now has dropped down to 87,000 coins because we had supply last night. But you'll see here, throughout the week, it was an average of about 84,000, 85,000 coins. Sort of dropped down again. Uh, into Tuesday, it was 85,000 coins. Hazard saw a 13,000 coin rise, which is not to be sniffed at at all. Because if you bought him at that price, you're looking at something not far of 10,000 coins profit a card. So if you had 10 of them, you're looking at about 100,000 coins profit off of an 8, 8, 880,000 coin spend. The back to that is with Hunters, he sells for a little bit more. And 
This is an average price. You can always pick him up for a lot less than that. I saw him on uh, Wednesday and Thursday rewards as low as like 79,000. Um, so you can, you can make a lot more from him. You can make 15,000 coins a card. But that, that's where we're seeing the effectiveness happen here. It's not happening at the lower end. It's really not happening at the lower end. And so you have to be mindful of this. When people are taking to Link Invest, it doesn't always go so well. Valverde himself, if we look at Valverde here, let's get him up. He's a relatively meta card and a relatively sought after card. Now, if we click on his normal card, 28,000 coins, he's seen a nice steep increase. So he's gone from his low, which was like last Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, from 21,000. And he's continuing to increase to nearly 29, 30,000 coins. That's because he's needed. He's wanted. He's a very good card. People want to buy him. Um, you have to look for meta. It can't just be they're out of packs and we're going to go out and buy them. You have to look for the cards that are relatively meta. I want to show you Lorente as well uh, when I get, while I get a chance. Uh, let's go Marcus Lorente. Let's go his 84 cards, 82 card even. Has plummeted down, but he was as low as 1.6k while he was in packs. <laughs> There's a bunch of Borat adverts there. He got up as high as 5.3k. Why? Because he's still a relatively usable card. Yes, he gets lots of supply because he's 82, but this card is still a very good card on this game. Uh, I used him this weekend league. It was brilliant. So he out of packs because there's a relative demand for him. He's going to rise. But don't go and buy Rafael Guerrero's because who's using Rafael Guerrero in the team? Yeah, he might see a little rise, but it ain't that relevant. But Joe Gomez in particular, I want to show you. So obviously 389k. Now look at Kyle Walker's inform. Look at what it's done. Throughout time, it's risen, it's risen, it's risen. But its biggest rise has come with that Joe Gomez. So in terms of like the gap it's risen to, has come with that Joe Gomez rise. Because he linked into Joe Gomez. He's gone from what? The day before he came out to 455,000 coins, all the way up to 524,000 coins. Now, if you'd have gone out and bought a few of him for the similar price to Valverde, again, you're making very good profit because he's, ob he's an obvious link to Joe Gomez. But you have to sort of link your prices up. They're not going to jump up in price too much. And the people that are going to link Joe Gomez up, they're going to link better right backs they're not, and, and centre backs. They're not going to be linking him to Harry Maguire, for example. His 85 uh, right back card. Now, he's at a low at the moment. I sold mine yesterday for 100,000 coins. Um, but at a low of 85,000 coins, yesterday I'm telling you now, he got to 100,000 coins. I sold mine for 100,000 coins. He gained 15,000 coins of, uh, of value. Slightly, slightly more of a shadow and an anchor on him. Because again, if you've got Joe Gomez and your choices are uh, right back, you're going to link him to Carl Walker probably. You're not probably going to link him to, to, again, Trent Alexander-Arnold, who's not that good. You're going to link him into Walker most likely. Even Semedo saw a slight rise this week um, as a result of him of, of Joe Gomez coming out because he doesn't hard link him, but he does link him. Allison, again, a very easy one to think about linking to him. Why? Because he's the best keeper in that league and he also strong links Joe Gomez. So again, we look at Wednesday, like we saw it like Tuesday, Wednesday, 70, 74,000 coins. Gets as high as 89,000 coins. Again, he was slightly higher than that yesterday at points. But again, a, a near sort of 13, 14,000 coin increase. Because people are going to strong link Joe Gomez. The keeper is the way they're going to do that. And they're going to link it to the best keeper in the league. They're not going to link it to a weak keeper or a random English keeper like Pope. That's the point here. Anyone that got in red picks is still going to do that. He's an easy strong link. So people are going to do that. So when people are telling you to link invest, I'm going to be blunt with you. It does not really work at the level that you think it does. It has to work at a higher level than more meta cards with limited supply. Limited supply means that the cards usually tend to hold a better value. The more they get taken off the market, the more expensive they get. So that's how you invest a team of the weeks. In my opinion, invest in the cards that are going to link to the better players in that league and use your brain. If you've got a defender, link him to a be the best keeper you can find that's got a hard link. Those sort of things work. But I'm going to go and talk about fodder now as well. Fodder investing for team of the week. So I'll be right back with that. I don't want to bombard you with loads of stuff straight away. So back in two seconds time. All right, guys. So here we are on Footbin. And last week, you remember I brought the team of the week video out. And I told you that team of the week plays at the moment tend to be fodder. So the two cards we looked at in particular were Parejo and Oyazabal. They were the two that we looked at. Now Parejo, when he was out of packs, this is what he did. He absolutely spiked. Now there needs to be demand for the card. So there needs to be decent SBC on the game or something that means that fodder rises in general. But we got, specifically in this week, obviously we've got Naki Williams who acquired La Liga and Spanish players. But fodder tends to rise out of packs. It usually always does. Especially this year, it seems, seems to be the higher level fodder. Not Extremely high level fodder, but these sort of fodders, the 85s, the 84s. Oh, is the other one we looked at. And I told you about the fact that investing into him saw a massive rise and you made a fair amount of profit. Now, this week with Team of the Week 5, there are very similar players in this Team of the Week. You have got Alberto, you've got Silva, and you've got Paulinho. Now, Paulinho we'll talk about last. But again, 
David Silva, into this week's team of the week, sitting at about 13,000 as lowest earlier in the week. He's now sitting at 18,000 coins, a 5,000 coin rise from a 13,000 coin spend. So realistically, at 4,000 coins profit per card at the moment. Luis Alberto, 8,800 is where he is sat currently. Before he went into the, whatever it was, team of the week, he's at 7,700. You're looking at about 1,000 coin rise on him so far. Why has he not seen that big a rise? Because we haven't really had the demand so much for him, but he is up, without a doubt. He's up, and that's as simple as it gets. He's climbed. And then Paulinho, again, has seen quite a fair, a fair rise. From early on the week at 1.3k, he's got up as high as 3.2. He's nearly, well, he's more than doubled in price. Now, there's two reasons for that. First, Taliska came out and links into Taliska, but most people are going to do the Taliska, probably going to link him to Paulinho's team of the week. Uh, if you've got a coin spend on Taliska, you could probably get Paulinho's team of the week. Um, but he's also a Brazilian centre mid. They rise out of packs. This is where investments in Team of the Week are doing well with Fodder. They're all going up. Fodder tends to do really well. I want to show you this week from, uh, from, from this. Rafael Guerrero, for example. So if you look at his 84 card that he's got. This is an 84 left mid. Look at what he has done. He has gone from 3,800 all the way up to 6,100 coins. An 84 left mid. Left mids do extremely well because you need them for chem. So people like Guerrero and whatnot, if you know they get into Team of the Week, you can go and buy into them easily. You can buy into those sort of cards. They will see a profit, especially during a promo. When promos come out, SBCs come out, these cards are acquired, and that is where your money should be. I told you this last week. I'm telling you it again this week. That is where your money is at because that's where your best place to put some money in, and it's very, sort of a very, very quick return usually. Within two or three days, you tend to see quite a decent chunk of change back. At his lowest point last week, he was sat at 3,500 coins. He's now up as high as 6,200, not far off doubled in price again. Once you come to selling, you're looking at 2,500 coins a card profit. If you bought, I don't know, not just going to throw it on my head, if you bought 10 of them, and you're getting to what, 2,500 coins profit, that's 25,000 coins. You buy 100, it's 255,000 coins, 250,000 coins. You have made in the space of two or three days. And it's really where you need to be putting your coins at the moment, in my opinion. That is how you sort of need to talk about investing right now because that's the best place for it to be. I told you last week, I'll tell you again this week, that is what you need to be doing. But that's why I'd be looking to place my coins this week. The final thing that I would consider looking at is how the rule breakers from Team 1 do this week now they're out of packs. We'll probably see a drop off in them specifically as weekendly gets sold off, those cards will probably come down. There is a high chance that I buy into a few of those and leave them sat there. Because cards out of pack, especially relatively meta cards, tend to do well. The, the exception to that is the crap team of the weeks you get. Ollie Watkins, those sort of cards have really come down in price. They haven't really held a good value. But decent cards that are rule breakers do have the potential that when they're out of packs, they will rise in value. So this week, if, I, if you're on a low budget, I'd be looking at the likes of Andre, Dumfries and those guys... At a higher budget, you might want to be looking in the mid-tier of Lorente and things like that. And seeing what they do out of packs. If out of packs, you see quite a steep drop-off, it could be worth buying in. I'm going to talk about that later in the week with the videos and give you guys an idea about that. I don't want to go into too much detail about it, but look out for that video probably on Monday. Um, but I want to see what the rule breakers do out of packs. If those rule breakers do very, very well and they drop off quite a bit, I probably will buy two or three to sell into next weekend league when they should see quite a significant climb. But that is the end of this video. That is how you invest and where I think you should be investing your coins right now. As always, if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing down below. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you never miss a trading video. Check me out on Twitch. Check out the Discord. Check out foottrading.co.uk. That's how we say it. But for now, lads, I am out. Peace out. I'll speak to you soon.